Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Welcome back. It is 530 here on this Tuesday morning. Thanks so much for starting your day with us. Uh, it's hard to believe that Thanksgiving is just two days away. And uh, Kevin Shred, who has a look at our forecast on this Tuesday. Kev. Uh, today we'll look for sunshine, but also we're going to see that haze around again. Unfortunately, when we see these ridges uh, kind of anchored over us, our air quality isn't the best, and that's exactly what we're going to be seeing today. It'll be unhealthy for sensitive groups, so keep that in mind. Let's take you outside and show you our temperature. I want to grab a jacket if you have to head outdoors, 43 degrees, uh, no wind right now, only expecting a light breeze as we go throughout the day. And hour by hour, you can see we're going to rise into those 60s once again this afternoon. And then we take a look at the mountains, a chilly start, 27 degrees into Hatchby, a southeast wind at 5 miles per hour. And as we take a look at the hour by hour, as we approach 7 a.m., we should be near 30 and then mid 50s expected this afternoon. So you will get to thaw out a little bit throughout the afternoon hours. We'll take a closer look at our Thanksgiving forecast. We'll take a look at the national weather as well. That's all coming your way in just a little bit. For now, we'll send it back over to you. All right, Kev, thanks so much. Your time now is 532, and this morning, the Biden transition is now official, getting the green light from the Trump administration to get to work. But that does not mean the president is giving up his fight against election results. Tracy Potts has more from Washington. Alex, good morning. Good morning, everyone. The Biden team calls this a needed step. Now they can coordinate the coronavirus response with the government and talk national security issues with the Pentagon. In a statement last night, the Pentagon said they are already reaching out. Ascertainment, determining an apparent presidential winner, opens the door to more than $7 million in government funds for the Biden transition and allows them to coordinate with the federal government. General Services Director Emily Murphy insists her delayed decision was not political. And while President Trump said for the first time he'll direct federal employees to comply, he added that legal challenges are moving full speed ahead and he will never concede. The election was stolen and President Trump won by a landslide. President-elect Biden also moving forward, appearing this afternoon with newly announced cabinet nominees. He makes history with two never before held by women, former Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen as Treasury Secretary and of Real Haynes as Director of National Intelligence. Plus Alejandro Mayor the first immigrant and Latino to serve as Homeland Security Secretary. He's basically telling the rest of the world, we are back, this is our A-team. Biden telling the nation's mayors. We're here for you, we're going to listen to you and work with you. More nominations expected today. Former diplomats Linda Thomas-Greenfield as ambassador to the United Nations. Jake Sullivan as national security advisor. Longtime foreign policy advisor Tony Blinken as secretary of state. And former secretary of state John Kerry as a special envoy on climate. Many of those nominees worked in the Obama administration. I'm Tracy Potts, 17 News. And that is the subject of today's 17 Interactive Feedback Poll. Today we're asking you, should President Trump continue to legally challenge the election results? You can call or text us at 661-888-4617. Press 1 if yes, you think President Trump should continue to legally challenge the election results. 2 if not. You can also text, tweet, email, or Facebook your comments to us. Once again, our Interactive Feedback phone line, 661-888-4617. And a hint of normalcy in this anything-but-normal presidential transition period, with President Trump scheduled to pardon the annual Thanksgiving turkey at the White House today. The turkeys named Corn and Cobb have arrived in D.C. They're actually staying at the Willard Hotel after leaving Iowa after the weekend, uh, over the weekend. This is President Trump pardoning last year's turkey. The, president, uh, the first president to grant a turkey pardon was President George H.W. Bush in 1989. Time now is 535, and from our 17 follow-up file, Bakersfield police are asking for your help finding a man they say hit a woman with his car and then pulled a gun on bystanders trying to help her. Police are looking for 18-year-old uh, Trevion Pitts. BPD says he was involved in the hit-and-run crash on East California Avenue at the La Via Market. The terrifying crash was caught on camera. You may remember us showing you this last week. 42-year-old Elizabeth Sanchez Gomez was hurt but is expected to make a full recovery. 
VPD says after the crash, Pitts brandished a gun at witnesses and made threats while they were trying to help Gomez. Pitts is considered armed and dangerous. If you see him, call police at 327-7111. Union Pacific Railroad is investigating the cause of a train derailment west of Visalia. The California Highway Patrol had to shut down Highway 99 near Goshen due to the derailment, which happened around 640 yesterday morning. Tulare County fire officials said the train cars were loaded with liquid hydro, hydro, or hydrochloric butane. Two hazmat teams, one from Union Pacific Railroad and another from Tulare County Fire, responded to the scene. Fire officials said one tank loaded with hydrochloric acid was leaking but did not pose a threat. No injuries were reported. In education news now, a reminder that Bakersfield College will be closed Thursday and Friday due to the Thanksgiving holiday. The college will resume regular hours on Monday. Hours remain unchanged for both the student information desk and financial and lobby through tomorrow. And the winners have been announced for the Thankful for Our Teachers giveaway. Cornerstone Mortgage announced the winners on its Facebook page Friday. Mrs. Kathy, Miss Marie, and Miss Laura were all nominated by county members for going above and beyond the call of duty during the pandemic. Now they're set to claim some prizes tomorrow, including a day of pampering. Congratulations to them. Well, KGT is teaming up with Adventist Health Bakersfield to highlight the many inspiring stories here in our community. Lives are transformed every day by people here in Kern County who care and take action to better the lives of others. This morning, 17th Taylor Schaub introduces us to a Lake Isabella man whose holiday mission is giving homeless veterans a place to call their own. Good morning, Taylor. Well, good morning, Alex. In the season of giving, Jason Thorweason is trying to prove an age-old idiom that one man's trash really is another man's treasure. Sometimes they just take one look at you and they just want to go the other way. Jason Thorwegan knows what it's like to live on the outskirts of society. I should be somebody that's uh, been in prison or uh, go to prison for life or dead or hospitalized or laying in a gutter. After being beaten and molested as a boy, he found himself relegated to the streets, spending the prime of his youth attempting to wash away the pain of the past. Too many people suffer out there and not enough people stand up for them. Now clean and sober, with a real roof over his head, Thorwegan wants to make his second chance count. So the Lake Isabella man is spending every penny he has, converting used vans into homes for homeless veterans. They've seen things like I've seen. They've seen war. They've been hunted. You know, they've been chased. They deserve more. So far, he's restored and donated three vehicles. All the vets struggling to readjust to civilian life. We need to get them a license. We need to get them insurance. You know, I don't just give these vans away. Oh, hey, here. No, 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 no. We need it fixed. We need license. We need insurance. His project is called Van for a Plan. And while he's more than happy to keep doing what he can, Thorwegan's disability checks simply aren't enough to cover his costs. I'm giving away free vans with less than $100 in my pocket. So he's asking the community for donations to help convert vans like this one into a home furnished with a bed, stove, and other basic living necessities. And these guys gave everything. They gave absolutely everything. They gave away their families. They gave away their time. Some of them even gave away their life. Now he's gone ahead and started a GoFundMe page, and if you'd like to support it, you can find that link on our website, kgt.com, and we'll post that under the hot link icon. In Southwest Bakersfield, Taylor Shaw, 17 News. Welcome back to your 17 Health Watch. New research suggests eating a green Mediterranean diet may be even better for heart health than the traditional version. Scientists in Israel assigned nearly 300 obese men to a regular Mediterranean diet, or a green version, which includes more plant matter and green tea. After six months, the Green Med group lost more weight and inches around the waist. They also had greater drops in bad cholesterol, blood pressure, and insulin resistance and inflammation markers. Turns out many of the characters we see in movies are not good role models when it comes to their diets. Stanford University researchers analyzed the food and drinks consumed in 250 top-grossing movies. 
73% of the films earned a poor nutrition rating for food and 80% for beverages. In fact, movie diets contain 25% more fat, 16% more sugar, and 313% higher alcohol content than Americans typically consume. Wow. Well, Thanksgiving is going to look very different this year and uh, smaller and socially distanced in many households. But food safety experts say the rules for preventing foodborne illness remains the same. NBC's Sarah Dolph has more. This Thanksgiving, thanks for calling Butterball Turkey. Butterball Turkey. Butterball Turkey Top Line. This is Clark. How can I help you? Even the Butterball Turkey Hotline call takers working remotely from the comfort of their home kitchens. Have a great day. With health experts advising Americans to celebrate with members of their households only, more first time chefs are stepping into the kitchen. A lot of people will be preparing a turkey for the first time, which can be intimidating. Dr. Mindy Brashears with the USDA says the first step is to thaw your bird. Figure about 24 hours in the fridge for every four to five pounds of turkey. And cook using a meat thermometer to 165 degrees. We measure that in the thickest part of the uh, breast of the turkey or um, under the thigh or under the wings. Smaller gatherings may result in larger helpings of leftovers. Dr. Brashears recommends refrigerating them within two hours and consuming within four days to avoid foodborne illness. You don't want to make your family sick. You want to keep everyone healthy, especially during this time. Like Butterball, the USDA has a hotline that will be open on Thanksgiving Day. Help for home cooks, novice to experienced, to tackle holiday cooking questions. Sarah Dolliff, NBC News. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Next Star Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.